Welcome once again to What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it's the lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. Welcome to Information Nation, where knowledge is shared, wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. Today, I am angry and I'm probably going to run over my normal time frame. I try to get this done in 10 to 12 minutes. That's about the average span that um, adults tend to stay connected with you. They tend to pay attention. Anything over that, you sort of lose people. But today, I'm talking to you about car insurance. Seniors and car insurance. I'm so mad I could bite nails. So, let's get started. Senior drivers pay on average $1,300 a year or about $110 a month for auto insurance. Supposedly, we, in the age group of 60 to 69, pay the cheapest rates. Where? When? I've been driving for more than 40 years. I've only been involved in five accidents in that whole time frame, and none of them were my fault. But I'm paying $250 a month. Yes, that's about $3,000 a year. And to top it off, I pay an additional $5 a month for the privilege of paying them online. I thought that, but I didn't get anywhere with it. So I joined AARP <clears throat> to get a discount on my insurance. I joined uh, with um, Hartford, Hartford Insurance. And this is my rate, $250 a month plus $5 additional for paying it online. And I'm trying to think, what would I be paying if I didn't have a discount? I'm mad. I'm driving less now that I'm retired. And I have an excellent driving record. I didn't hit anybody. However, about two years ago, right now it's about two years ago, my car was legally parked in front of my house. Some joker came along and tore me up, half drunk. He hit my car, the next door neighbor's car, three or four cars up the street. And then he got out and abandoned the vehicle. Now, because I used to work for the Wilmington Police Department, I was able to call and, and get somebody to come out and take a look at it. Because typically they don't, they don't come out and look at that kind of stuff. Because what can they report? Nobody's there. It's a hit and run. But he had tore my car up so bad. I had a Lincoln. Very nice Lincoln. Um, he had tore my car up so bad. Uh, I, was, I was just beside myself with anger. Early in the morning. And I got the police to come out. Took a report, blah, 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 blah. But that was less than two years ago, so I had to report it whenever I apply for insurance changes or insurance quotes. So anyway, according to Progressive.com, the following chart should be the norm for charging for insurance rates. 45 to 49 should pay about 120 bucks a month. 50 to 54, $111. 55 to 64, 100 bucks. 65 to 74, $96. And then 75 and up, it goes back up to $101 a month. Okay. I have never paid those rates. So I'm trying to figure out what is the problem. What happened that I am paying um, through the nose for car insurance? My driving has gone down. My uh, 
income is fixed now as opposed to variable, but I've not made any claims with the exception of the person that hit me in the last two years. I couldn't figure it out. So I went online and I did my research. I did my homework. The only thing left is my credit score. Mm-hmm. You are getting rates on your insurance based on your credit score. USAA.com, which is a military insurance company for which when I was married to my ex-husband, I could have got these rates. My kids were getting good rates through them. I'm no longer eligible, but they have excellent insurance rates. They imply that your credit score does not have an impact on your insurance. Liar, liar, pants on fire. But your overall credit history does. Dang, I guess I would be glad that I should be glad that I'm not paying $400 a month. Uh, because remember my $200,000 in student loans? Well, my credit is shot. So USAA, the military insurance company, lays it all out on their website. And I'm going to give you blow by blow what I found out. Your FICO score is your overall credit score. It's based on information in your credit report, as reported by the three fairy godmothers. Um, I'm calling them godmothers. Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. You heard those names, right? They hold the power of changing your life in their decisions. Each one calculates your score differently. Why? And they may weigh more heavily on a certain piece of information other than the other two. So what Equifax might find uh, important for granting you a good score, TransUnion and Experience, Experian may not. Therefore, in theory, you have three credit scores. Come on now. Having a high score means you get favorable rates. By the same token, if you have a low score, you get crappy rates. Although they are similar, credit scores vary depending on the purpose. If you're buying a house, the um, lending, lending, lenders and banks rely on the FICO score. If you're getting an auto loan, they rely on the Vantage score. And if you're getting auto insurance, they rely on your FICO store, score. Stop already. This is ridiculous. Why have we let this go on so long? We have three different pots to choose from when making a decision. At least they do. So, is um, Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax is yes, no, and maybe. Come on now. All over the world, it's either yes or no. That third choice only messes up the calculation, in my opinion. Yes or no. You're going to do it or you're not. That third one just screws up everything. Credit scores are designed to predict delinquency. What, what, what? Lenders care a lot about these scores because it's their money on the line. I understand that. And being wrong can cost them significantly. Mortgage payments can easily be in the $2,000 a month range and car notes in the $500 to $700 a month range. So a late payment can be costly in the long run. And typically, um, if you get behind those kind of payments, it's hard to catch up. 
and lenders know that. They're already designed, they, they factored that in. So, here's what I did. Today, in an effort to save money, I went to Geico. You can go right online, you know they give you one of them instant quotes. The application asked the routine questions, you know, my status since retiring has changed with this exception. I don't drive hardly anywhere anymore. Everything I need primarily is in my building, a movie theater, a swimming pool, uh, arts and crafts, a fitness center, uh, a wellness center, um, a community center. Everything I need is here. I go out maybe once a month and do my shopping, my grocery shopping, and then I'm in. I don't have to drive anywhere except on Sunday to go to church and the occasional doctor's appointment. And I told you here in South Carolina, they have this great service called South Carolina House Calls. They are my primary care physician. They come here and do everything, draw my blood, uh, do my x-rays. Yes, an x-ray machine. I had my um, uh heart rate and all of that, everything is done at the house. So I'm not driving less than 10,000 miles a year, I know. So tell me why when I put in all my information, it came back $40 higher than what I'm currently paying. Really? The only thing that changed is that FICO score. That's all. That's the only change. It's gotten worse because now I'm on a fixed income and I don't have any, um, um, what do you call it, uh, disposable income. I mean, everything is accounted for. And so I guess I'm a greater risk. I don't have any extra income. It's not fair. It's not fair. Now, here's the way that they say you can lower it. Stay accident free. If it's not your fault, it's still counted against you because it's an accident. They don't care that my car was parked. I wasn't even in it. Keep asking me, was anybody injured? No. Only thing injured is my pocketbook. That's not fair. Enroll in a usage-based program where some insurance companies offer you the option to put an app on your phone that tracks your driving behavior. I did that. I'm doing that now. Hartford, which is my current insurance company, tracks me every time I'm in the car. As a matter of fact, they sent me a message and said, I'm not driving enough. Really? Why aren't you reducing my rate? So, I reduced my amount of driving. They noticed it. They commented on it, but they haven't reduced my um, payment yet. So, the next thing they said is to consider your location. Certain areas are predisposed for higher rates, like New Jersey. It's a known fact. New Jersey has the highest insurance rates in the country. We all know that. But, if all these factors are taken into consideration and my quote is still too doggone high, what's left? My credit. According to Geico.com, a uh, report that was done by Connolly, Conning and Company, I'm going to put all this in the, in the comments, 92% of all insurance companies use credit-based insurance scores. 92%. I need to find that other 8% that's not using it because uh, these 92 folks is getting on my nerves. I'm fed up and I'm about to start a write-in campaign to the National Insurance Governing Authority. And you can join me if you like. So here's what I found out. The National Insurance Commissioner, or the NAIC, I'm going to put this in the comments, they are the ones that govern the rates. But 
each state has their own set of rules. So you got 51 sets of rules. Come on. There's no way that you can get this all pulled together and you're governing and saying, well, overall, you shouldn't charge more than this. And then each state comes up with, well, as long as we don't go over $250 a month, we can charge right up to that point because the feds say it's okay. That's not fair. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners, or the NAIC, is who we need to be contacting. We need to be knocking on their door. The federal agency, the one that's over top of them, is the Federal Insurance Office, and they're located in the U.S. Department of the Treasury. They're going to have a webcast on April the 10th at 1 o'clock. It's going to be a treasury webcast. Now, they're talking about financial literacy, but I believe you'll be able to ask questions. The question should be, what are you doing about the insurance rates that are killing your senior citizens? You have to go to home.treasury.gov, and then you click on the link. You can't do it before April the 10th because the link is not live yet. They'll be doing um, a webcast. It's not about insurance so much, but they are an insurance office. So any question concerning insurance should be addressed at this webcast. Or what they're going to do is tell you, we'll get back to you. It's okay. There is also a Federal Advisory Committee on Insurance, or FACI. Public comments, public comments can be sent to them at FACI at Treasury.gov. They just had a meeting on March the 20th, so of course we just missed it. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Let me tell you something else about that FICO score. It's used for auto insurance. It's a three-digit number that insurance companies use to predict the likelihood that you will file a claim. Come on. What are they? Gypsies? Magicians? Fairies? Fortune tellers? How do you know what I'm going to do? I tell you what you should know I'm going to do. I'm going to file a complaint against the FACI, the NAIC, the ABCD, the JKLM, whoever, all these alphabets. They need to hear from us because this is ridiculous. Now, I knew I was paying three grand a year. I knew it. I didn't get angry about it until I realized that they're using my credit score, which is not fair. Because you know, us folk, and when I say us folk, I mean seniors. I don't care what color you are. We're on a fixed income. Yeah, we fall behind on our bills sometimes. Yeah, we don't have the money to pay everything all at once. I'm using a lot of the times I'm using those um, uh, companies where you pay four. Yeah, I split the, that thing up and pay it in four because it helps me manage my money. I could even pay rent like that. There's a company that allows you to pay your rent, not in four, but in two. But I was looking at all of those kinds of agencies because I'm on a fixed income and every penny counts. Oh, I'm hot. I'm hot. And um, <laughs> whew, I couldn't wait to do this broadcast. I I'm, I'm telling you. I'm going to put the information in the comments. Let's talk about this. Because it affects all of us. And again, I don't care what color you are. If you're driving a car, it affects you. Whether you're 60 or you're 16, 
it affects you and it's not fair. I don't know when they started using the credit score against you, but it's always something, always something to knock you off your square. We're doing the best we can. Who told you to interject a credit score? Maybe they thought by this age, you know, we got perfect credit. No, I've been helping kids, grandkids. I'm signing for this one. I'm doing for that one. I'm trying to help my neighbors. My credit is jacked up. And not so much because I don't pay my bills, but because I have $200,000 worth of student loans. I got some medical bills that weren't paid or covered for whatever reason. It is not fair and I'm not going to take it laying down. And you shouldn't either. Stay tuned because I'm going to have some more information on this subject. Please continue to subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell. Do all of that, <laughs> please. And remember, you don't know what you don't know.